Here he is. Oh, hi. All right. Blood pressure. What foods are the best to lower your blood pressure? I'm gonna pick out two in the grocery store, really simple ones. You can find these in any store that you're shopping in. Number one, right behind me, uh, beets. <laughs> the BBB. Look at these guys. So you can get them canned if you wanted to. Fresh is going to be best. Peel them, cook them, put them into a smoothie or juice them would be the way to do it probably. Smoothie for would be as right. But studies show these can lower blood pressure five to ten percent. Very solid. I actually put these in our greens powder and our greens powder then has beet juice in there, it has turmeric in there, so on a daily basis. So if you're not wanting to buy beets, you can check that out, but beets, a really good one to lower blood pressure levels. Let's go to the next one. All right, the second food I wanted to highlight for blood pressure is pomegranate. Now, this one's made from concentrate, but they didn't have an actual pomegranate in the store. So it would be better than nothing, but it comes from the concentrate, so it ends up having 34 grams of sugar. But I like pomegranate's effect on your blood pressure to instantly lower it. So look for the actual fruit. If not, this would be okay to take just a little bit in a glass. If you haven't hit your weight loss goals yet, then I would recommend starting with pomegranate. I would start with the beets, BB beets. So the other main thing is breathing and breathing is going to lower it instantly by just taking five second deep breaths in, five second deep breaths out a couple times a day for a couple minutes. That's really going to help you lower blood pressure. There, two foods, one instant remedy. So walk around the grocery store, find your foods, do your breathing exercises, and you'll lower your blood pressure. What are the foods that lower cholesterol? Come on this way. Cholesterol is got so many misnomers around it. So many people are scared of what they should buy in the grocery store to lower it. And I would just start with the simplest of them, which is why people oftentimes want to eat oatmeal or they want to eat uh, oats and they think that's going to be the thing to lower their cholesterol. What you're actually getting there is fiber. And there's no better way to get fiber than this stuff right here. Kale scores the highest on the Andy score in the grocery store, meaning the score that like how much nutrients is packed into one produce. Kale scores the highest on it. So you put this in your smoothies. We like to saute it maybe in some coconut oil and put some onions in there. It's pretty solid. Or you can make them into chips by baking them, but kale should be your friend. Makes a good pillow. <laughs> And so with kale, when I just said coconut oil, people start freaking out because they think a saturated fat is the problem when it comes to their cholesterol. Now saturated fats, if completely overdone and you go wild on them, yeah, it could have an effect on it. But the thing that causes high cholesterol is sugar. And the thing that causes it is rancid oils. So these unsaturated fats that are in the form of vegetable oil, soybean oil, we get way too many of them in the system. Coconut is a very, very solid oil. It occurs in nature. So when you heat it, it doesn't denature it and break apart. So you don't have to be scared of coconut oil if you're cooking your kale in it. Let's go over here. I set a couple of things out for us before you guys got here shopping with us. Uh, the other thing I really like for cholesterol is olive oil. So finding one that's unrefined, cold pressed, this one's organic. Uh, you're gonna be able to find this obviously in every grocery store that you're in. Um, this has shown really good in studies at bringing down LDL levels, supporting healthy triglycerides, and even raising HDL. So I like oils going in, coconut and olive, to help increase the HDL levels. Fish is another really good one. Um, I have some of it right here. I got some salmon, so this would be a uh, really good example. This is the closest I could find in this store. So I just tried to go to like a very general store that all of you would have in your neighborhood. Um, you wanna try to find wild caught, not farm raised. And it'll say right on there if it's wild caught or farm raised. Uh, wild caught's gonna be in nature, they're not fed. Uh, way more toxic foods like pellets that are full of whatever chemicals. But fish is also really good at supporting your uh, healthy cholesterol levels, especially lowering the LDLs and raising your HDLs. So there's your healthy foods you can find at any grocery store for cholesterol. Next up, we're gonna look at weight loss, we're gonna look at metabolism, we're gonna look at um, just burning up fat and lowering insulin, and there's nothing I like better to do this 
than ACV. You down with ACV? Yeah, you know me. Apple cider vinegar, organic, raw, unfiltered. What does that mean? That just means that it hasn't been highly processed. It's got little floaters in the bottom of it. That's the fermentation. That's the good stuff that's cultured. It's gonna give you a little bit of probiotic in there. Apple cider vinegar has been shown in studies to be more effective than metformin when you take two tablespoons, two in the morning, two at night. So really good. If you're trying to lose weight and control your insulin levels, which you don't have to be a diabetic to control insulin. Insulin's what's driving heart disease and cancer and so many different conditions in this country. So I like to add ACV in, in order to bring those levels down. Now, as far as also for supporting healthy weight loss. Oh, right behind me, let's do it. Avocados. So if you want to be a fat burner and you don't want your insulin levels to spike and you don't want to impact your diabetes if you have that, or you want your metabolism to play nice, you want to fuel it with fat. And there's no easier way to do this than an avocado. You can fit one of these in your purse. You can take this with you on the go. Like you can have these any time of the day and cut these open. A little bit of salt and pepper, they're fantastic. I had one for breakfast this morning. If I want to burn fat, I got to eat fat. I hope that concept makes sense. Those are the two best foods that I know of that are really easy to find in any grocery store, apple cider vinegar and avocados to help decrease the weight, increase your metabolism, control that insulin, which is what we all need to do. All right, next up, we're gonna look at uh, inflammation. What are the best foods that you can find right now today to help control inflammation? Let's go back over to, let's go this way. The roots. One of the best foods you can have for inflammation is ginger. And you can, uh, if you're unaware, never use it, never cooked with it, don't overdo it. But ginger has a, um, properties in it, um, the herbs and what it's made up of that actually help lower antioxidant and inflammatory levels in the body. Take the brown skin off, shave a little bit into a tea is a really good example. You can steep it that way. Um, you can shave a little bit off into a juice is a really good option. Some of you may even cook with it, but getting some ginger in on a daily basis, tea is probably the easiest way. Really, really good for inflammation levels. If you wanna mix it with turmeric, that's another really good option uh, for it. Let's go back over this way. Two other things that I really like for inflammation is you, I'm gonna go back to the fish example again. For getting fish in, fish oils, if you get a high enough amount of fish in, especially, uh, you know, this would be salmon, uh, uh, some of your larger fish, you gotta really watch tilapia and mackerel to make sure that they're wild caught. But some of these larger fish, you're gonna get a lot of fish oils in. And studies have shown if you get a high dose of omega-3, fatty acids in, it's equivalent to taking an aspirin or an ibuprofen to lower your inflammation and your pain levels. So by far the two things that I love the most, um, the roots, turmeric and ginger, and then fish oil, that combination right there can really make a difference on pain levels and inflammation, and then you don't have to take the NSAIDs. So throw those in the next time that you're hurting, see what the response is, start to figure out your doses, but that should be part of a regular regimen, especially if you're dealing with pain. Next is gut health. What, can, what foods can you eat to control leaky guts, to repair the gut? Now, a lot of people will focus on collagen and bone broth. I really like those. Um, it's hard to find in a regular grocery store trying to find your own bone broth. Maybe you could swipe some bones from the meat counter and use those. But what I like to do is really focus on um, using my collagen in powder form, which I make my own. You can get collagen on a daily basis. It helps seal the gut. But what about the mucus lining, the absorption, and the antioxidants. Let's check those out. These two foods, as far as getting sulfur in, MSM in the body, really, really good. They also are both gonna be higher on the L-glutamine scale. What L-glutamine does is it helps repair the mucosal lining of your gut. So we eat a ton of these in the Living Good household. Um, you could cook them with some avocado oil. That's gonna be really healthy. Put some salt and pepper on them. Asparagus, if you like to grill it, another really good food to get in. But a lot of people don't think of green foods right now when it comes to healing their leaky gut, but these two with MSM and L-glutamine, really, really good choices. Those are two of my top. The collagen, make sure you're just getting that in via a powdered form, is the way that I like it the best. All right, and finally, let's talk thyroid health. Come on this way. So two of my favorites for thyroid, 
number one is supporting the hormones. So what are the best foods to eat if you have a thyroid issue? Well, you want to make sure your, your hormones are maximized inside your body. So if you have any form of hormone related issue, you need the precursor to hormones and the precursor is vitamin D. Now you can take it in a, a capsule form. I have it on um, our store. You take it with vitamin K to make sure it's properly absorbed and that calcium ends up where it needs to end up. But eggs, egg yolks are actually a really good source. There it is, a vitamin D. Also your B vitamins, which a lot of females end up being deficient in. And then even vitamin E, which is gonna be a really good antioxidant. So make sure the eggs are organic. Um, and putting those in on a daily basis, just one or two eggs in the morning, really good source of omega-3. So it's kind of hitting a lot of different topics uh, from a health perspective. The other one are macadamia nuts, and they are out at the store. But the reason I like this one, or excuse me, not macadamia nuts, uh, Brazil nuts. And they're out at the store here, but why I like Brazil nuts is they're really high in selenium, and selenium helps support a healthy thyroid. Um, and the grocery store didn't have any seaweed either imagine that but that's full of iodine so iodine based uh, and iodine support helps but for your everyday grocery store Brazil nuts which they'll typically have a handful of those each day really helps a healthy thyroid and then get your vitamin D in to help be the precursor to building those thyroid hormones a lot of people don't think of that what they need